Okay, so uh, next thing up here in uh, demolition process at the uh, old abandoned mobile home here is to uh, to take the I'm gonna get the shingles uh, stripped off of this uh, addition here, and I showed you in a previous video how how this was done, um, and it's you know how they we've got metal roof on the main unit. This is the main mobile home here, and then this is the addition here. And you can see the, the difference in the pitch there. We go from a 412 pitch to about a, I don't know, about a 112 pitch. So, you know, the way this was done is just completely wrong. Um, and it has caused problems. Uh, and I showed you in the other video how, you know, they have this uh, screen here. They put the screen and this mesh uh, was just laid in tar. But the tar has all dried out. And so what's happened now is you can see it's, you know, this has failed. And so here you get underneath here where water has gone up underneath there and then run back this way into the addition. And it's caused a lot of damage down in that addition over the years. So I really don't like these roofs like this. Uh, this is a, a common thing when you have, uh, when you see a roof like this, you really, if you're looking at buying one of these places, you want to make sure you really check this out uh because it's something that can bite you um th this pitch of a roof is not good for uh asphalt shingles uh you need to really should have a some kind of a membrane um uh, you know instead of these shingles because these shingles have too many places where water can get back up and especially down at the bottom here along the uh the eave um and you know you can see where like i showed you on the last one where i've went through it here so especially underneath this tree you know it didn't get sun and uh, you know it just accumulates uh, this this area in here is really bad and got a lot of mold underneath because of it being wet and so it's just you know it's just really not a good way to do this so um, I'm gonna get this uh, stripped off here now and get this into my little uh, utility trailer and get this hauled away to the to the uh, landfill and so you can see over here on the uh, shed this little workshop building at the back where I've uh, got those shingles all stripped off of that little building there and I've hauled those away already so uh, you might think if you're following me along here you might think well this guy's got uh, ADD or something because he can't stick on one thing but uh, you know I've uh, been working on that uh, we took that carport and deck roof off and uh, you know that had a metal roof so uh, that metal has to go to a different place in the landfill we're very uh, conscious about what we do with our uh, material here uh, to recycle it and you know and uh, dispose of it properly uh, if we don't we're, we're subject to pretty heavy fines so uh, the other thing that I've got going on here is that when I have a bring the dumpsters in I'm gonna bring in uh, probably a 25 yard dumpster and uh, so when I bring that dumpster in um, I have to make good use of it so um, I can't tie it up for like days and days and days and weeks so I have to get it filled and get it out otherwise I pay a pretty heavy penalty because you know those dumpsters are needed other places and so the way the dumpster works uh, with the company that, that I use is um, he uh, charges me a flat fee it's a 200 dollar flat fee to have it delivered and dump it and then i have to pay the tipping fee uh, at the dump for you know for uh getting rid of, getting rid of what's in the bin so um i need to sort of you know organize this so that things happen you know in in a timely manner and so the way I, I'm going about this is you know get rid of all of the uh, recyclable recyclable things first and you know get to the point where when I get that uh, dumpster in I, I'm tearing down so uh, this roof over here is gonna get dismantled and uh, the trusses I'm gonna salvage the trusses out of those I'm gonna you know, be able to get some good money out of that and basically once I get this roof off of here this is ready to tear down um, but before I call in the dumpster, I'll get the siding off and get the windows pulled out of it. And, you know, so I just uh, can do that in a timely manner. But, uh, so, um, 
I'll show you what I'm gonna do here. Um, I'm not sure how I'm gonna record this, but it's gonna be interesting. I'll show you what's underneath this. Uh, it's gonna be interesting to see what's here. And uh, the tool that I used to do this work, uh, there's a lot of ways you can strip off old shingles, but I used to use a four tine potato fork and, and that worked pretty well. But uh, nowadays I'm using this thing here and this, this is the, called the uh, Razorback. And this is a professional tool, but I'll tell you, it really makes things uh, easy. And uh, it's kind of like a shovel and it's uh, a fork combined. And so the way this works is you just drive this underneath the uh, shingles and, you know, and then lift them up. Um, and you can see there's, there's slots in there. And what those slots are for is to, you know, grab the uh, roofing nails and pull them. Uh, they also have them on the back, so you can use this, you know, two ways. You can use it, tip it up or tip it forward. All right, so uh, I'm going to start tearing away here, and we'll see what's underneath. Stay tuned. Okay, so I'm uh, a little further along into this now, and I'll just show you what we've got here. And so um, they used a uh, 7 16 OSB board uh, for decking. And if you look at this, you can see that the, the four by eight sh sheets, foot sheets, um, are going this way. Um, and normally you'd see them on a roof going this way. And so with the oriented strand board, OSB board, you want to have the, the boards go across the supports. Okay, so the rafters are going this way, so you would assume that we would go this way with it. Uh, you can actually see on the uh, APA stamp uh, where it tells you um, uh, strength axis right here. Strength axis uh, is this direction, which means that you you would put this going across your ceiling joist this way. And actually, this is only a 3 8 inch. Okay, so this is not the code. Uh, 3 8 is for walls. 7 16 is what you put on roofs. Um, so the reason that they have it going this way up and down the roof instead of crossways was because uh, underneath um, they have strapped the rafters which are going this way they strapped them with one by fours going this way and so your access now goes uh, changes 90 degrees to go this way so the strength in the panel is across between the one by fours now those one by fours are two foot on centers underneath there and the reason that they did that with the one by fours underneath there was to create ventilation for air to move but uh, as you know from the, vi the previous videos that I showed you um, that that hasn't worked uh, you know it was more wet and moldy in there so um, these two one by fours are two foot centers okay there's another one there you can see another one there and so between the panels um, where the panels meet which is right here, you can see. If I step on this, I don't know if I'm trying to get a little closer, but you can see how, how that panel gives. So in between, in between, there should be an H clip in here, in between the supports. Okay, that's missing. Um, so this obviously wasn't done by a professional. I don't think a professional would, would do this um, in this manner. Now, as far as the roofing goes, you can see what we have underneath these old shingles here is tar paper. And so, this is a very minimal, again, none of this is the code, okay? These shingles, these shingles are not allowed on a pitch this, this low. Um, so that's the first thing like, that's very visible that is, uh, makes this not the code. Um, the second thing is that under anything less than a 412 pitch, you have to have a, an ice and water shield which is a, uh, a, a continuous sealed membrane that goes underneath your shingles so that if there's anything gets through the shingles, it hits that ice and water shield and it goes out. Uh, here, all we have is just tar paper, okay? So this is just regular, um, you know, just regular, probably 15 pound paper. And uh, you, can use, you can use this. This is an acceptable method on a steeper pitched roof. So if you were, um, 
and, and this diff it is this varies from place to place and and by code but uh, you know doing this this no matter how they did this this isn't right but what they should have done is um, instead of overlapping you can see here where they've overlapped like two inches um, normally you would overla overlap three in any case it would be overlap three inches here instead of just an inch and a half or two but when you get into a lower slope you basically want to have an 18 inch overlap so you, you're o overlapping 18 inches every time you go up a step so here you can see they go up to the next step and again you know it's just a, an inch and a half you know they just use this line here as a gauge and this one here so you know in this low slope you know the water can still get it up underneath here okay then of course you have all the places where it's been nailed through and stapled through you know which it's basically perforated so in spite of all that you know this this roof deck right in this area is not that bad um you know over here there's signs that you can see it's kind of black and stained but it's still i mean it's still sound it's spongy but it's sound and you know so it's it's held up for all that time and you can see definitely where you know on the lower part here where the snow accumulates and water backs up you can see where it's darker so that's the damage and then up there where it's higher it's it's uh you know it's uh it's more bright it's like it's more new okay along the uh, eave here you can see where uh you know the water's been backing up underneath the shingles there and you can see where it's all stained here and that's where you know you have to be very careful on how you how you do that with your overhangs and stuff with your shingles so i'll just show you this detail here on what they did with this where it meets so um what they've done is they they got to the top here and they ran a piece of tar paper up underneath okay and then they ran a row of shingles you can see this row of shingles goes up underneath there and then they ran another one Okay, then they put tar in here, they smeared tar underneath, okay, and then they nailed it, and then they put that mesh that I was showing you before, uh, you know, to waterproof it. So, uh, you know, this isn't too bad right here, um, but what happens, and has happened, is that water has leaked through here, and it goes back up underneath, and again, you know, it ran into the addition there. So this is coming off really is easy here with this tool on. I'll just show you how this tool works. Um, this is pretty cool how this works. So I'll just start up in here. So uh, another thing that's uh, not correct here, so I'll show you a couple places, is uh, you can see these little tiny nails that they've used. These are way too short. You know, by the time that gets through a couple layers of shingles and into that OSB board, you know, it's just barely hanging on there. Uh, another you can sign that this is uh, a problem roof is that these are galvanized nails and you can see that this nail is all rusty and all of the nails are rusty which shows you know that they've been wet and they shouldn't be getting wet um, okay another thing uh, as we go along here with the uh, nail I'll show you a thing about nailing shingles so this is the bottom of the shingle here and this is the top of the shingle you know this is basically you can just see how withered up these are but uh you can see where they've nailed it here uh high up on the shingle uh, that's not the right place to nail the shingle the shingle should be nailed down here and it should go through both shingles so it should go through this one and this one as well so that's another error here okay so i'll just kind of show you how this little tool works here so basically, okay, let's see if I can get everything lined up here. So you just start with this and you just go underneath like this. And, and they just peel up you know, just like this. So it's kind of hard to do this one-handed, but there you can see it just peels up. And, uh, you know, this, this shouldn't be coming up this easy. You know, they should, they should have glued together a little bit better. Uh, shingles are designed so that they sort of stick to each other. And just basically, you know, you just, this is the way you take these off in a hurry. You just, you know, just go like that. Try both hands here. Goes better. Just 
get you just go underneath and just find that nail and just pop. Pop, pop, pop. Doesn't take you long. You have to get to the end of the roof that way. Now, if there's any nails left behind, so there you can see that there's a nail left. You just go in there with your tool and you just grab it and you just pop it out. Just like that. Very simple. Okay, so I'm just hauling these over. I was kind of in a bit of a dilemma of where I was going to, how I was going to get these off of here. Looks like I'm going to have to handle them twice. So I'm just tossing them over the edge here. Normally I like to have my trailer uh, in a place where it's handy and I just drop them into the trailer and it saves me handling. But uh, here it looks like I'm going to have to, uh, you know, pick them up in my wheelbarrow and wheel them around to my trailer just because... You know, I can't get back in here anywhere with my trailer, even at the other end there. All right, folks, so uh, stay tuned. I'll uh, show you a little bit more when we get a little further along here. Razor back. That thing really works slick. Okay, so I've got it all stripped off here now, and back down to the old OSB board. And there's my pile of shingles down there and little tar paper. So the next job is going to be to get that into the trailer and get it out to the dump. But uh, yeah, this is what it looks like once it's all stripped off. So under this tree here, 
This tree uh, caused a lot of damage to the roof. And uh, I'm not sure if this is going to show up on the camera or not, but uh, you can just kind of see how black this is here. And it's really, whoop, really sketchy here. It's very, like it's all really soft and uh, easy, to, easy to go through here. Just, uh, if you were going to re-roof this roof, we're, we're tearing this one down, but if we were going to re-roof this, uh, you'd have to take this whole section off of here and uh, redo it. Put new uh, OSB on it. But again, this is only 3 eighths. It's supposed to be 7 16 so it's not, you know, it's a substandard. Uh, and it's actually not too bad along the eave. You can see here there's a, a spot that's, uh, you know, that's been getting wet and is getting a bit soft. And uh, something weird up here, I'm not sure what this is all about, but you can see how this one panel is quite a bit lower than the other. I'm not sure if that's a framing thing or, or just exactly what that is. So uh, there we go, that's that job done. And uh, I'm not sure what I'm going to do next, but uh, probably take the probably going to take the uh, trusses off of that uh, little building at the back next. I think that's probably what's up next. All right, folks, thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Bye bye.